Hello, this is the TradeSite U.S. Stocks and Futures Market Preview for Thursday, the 21st of May, 2020, and Friday the 22nd, as usual. We don't typically do a market preview for Fridays unless, as most of the week has already played out, unless something major comes up on Thursday. So unless that happens, I don't see anything being different. This has been a really boring week, and we'll talk about that when we look at the intra week action, but here's the ES front month futures contract. This is a daily chart of the broad market and futures form. Nothing here. All right, let's just move on with the daily charts. I want to talk about a couple of things. Um, let's go to the crude oil, uh, which is back up to 33.55. That's good. Uh, you know, the economy's starting to move again, so that's why that's happening. Gold up uh, down $2.10, but it was still hanging out near the highs of the session or the um, year. Uh, S&P cash. So here's the interesting thing. The S&P cash now has a 13 cell signal on it. Very interesting. Remember the daily chart. Last time we got a 13 cell signal on the daily was uh, back up in the end of or the beginning of January. And even though we made one little tiny push higher by a couple of points, that was the top. Now that's different from the monthly chart, by the way. I do want to be clear. This is nowhere near the same as the importance of the monthly signal, uh, which is still technically in place uh, when you look at the S&P. But here's the, so here's the 13 on the monthly. And we'll talk about this more with the weak one. But this is the thing we were looking at. Got this back in December. This is a major deal. And it's even more of a major deal because if you go back 20 years, we've only had it twice. One was in 2016, and then we immediately broke the risk line. And the deal with this signal is what? If you get it once, it's about an 80% chance that it works. If it doesn't work, so that 20% of the time it doesn't work immediately, if you get it again shortly thereafter, which I would argue that's what this is, as shortly as you can almost get it on the chart, then the second time it's it's like 95 percent of the time it works so this is why we were telling people at the end of the year get short the market get out of everything do whatever and obviously that played out now just to be clear because it's on the month, monthly time frame the target of that move is the red line at down near about 2000 it's actually 1980 or so and we've we made a good move down it got almost there didn't quite and we bounced but because it's on the monthly time frame the other way that the signal unravels is to get a new nine bar startup phase to the downside Currently, we're three bars down. So in other words, this tra this trade, this 13 signal that we got, the sell signal last year, this could take until December of this year to play out. And the target remains 2,000. So just be aware of that. Um, but on the daily chart, we now have a, that's a much lesser thing than the monthly, but we did have a 13 sell signal based on today's trade. If you look at the NASDAQ 100, guess what? 13 sell signal today. So just things to keep in mind. Um, you know, there's a risk line. Market can still go higher. It's funny because the risk line puts you almost at all-time highs. So we can go all the way back up to almost 97.50 here and still be on the risk line of this 13 sell signal and then still roll over. And the target is 77.50. That's the red line down below if we do roll. So just there's a lot of stuff going on here. This is very important from a technical perspective because, as we know, Technicals are what matters, not fundamentals. SOX up 65.18. Uh, no big deal. The biotech's up 86.66. The Russell 2000 up 39. The VIX loses $2.54. We're back down. Now, here's the thing. This got a 13 buy signal over a week ago, bounced off the risk line. It's now pointing back to test the risk line. But this was the even earlier sign because if the VIX is going to rise, the market's going to go lower, right? So now... This one bounced once and started to come back. Now that it's pulled back to retest the risk line, we've got sell signals on the NDX and the S&P. So this is a very key moment in the markets right here. And by the way, you don't often get these signals on the VIX. As a matter of fact, if you go back the entire year, you didn't get a 13, right? The nine startup phase was at the high, but you haven't gotten a 13 either way. So this is very significant. So we'll see what happens. Technical suggesting. Markets topping out here over the next day or two. Trend 1.05, 10 day moving average 1.06, advanced decline ratio on the NASDAQ, I'm sorry, volume on the NASDAQ 4.3 billion shares, advanced decline ratio on the NASDAQ was plus 18.45, so way more stocks up than down, plus 17.23 on the New York, so more stocks up than down. Google gains 34.76, it's fine. Apple up 6.09, um, still near the highs. Netflix down $3.37. Amazon up 48.61, Tesla up 7.55, Facebook gains 13.09, all-time highs on Facebook, good for them. Goldman Sachs up $3.61, but nowhere near all-time highs. TLT, 20-year bond ETF up 49 cents, the Dow was up 369 in the 24,000 range number. Here's the uh, five-minute chart of the ES. 
And here's the thing about this week. Probably the most boring week we've seen in a while. But I do want to show you. So there's if far left of the chart right now. Here's the gap up Monday. Dead flat for an hour. We drifted up for, in, into lunch. And then just dead flat all day. Been dead flat, dead flat. Tuesday, gap down a little, filled the gap. Dead flat all day. We sold off late in the day and went back to the lows of the week, right? Now, Wednesday, we gap back up and then dead flat. We basically close a couple points higher. The intraday action, what we've been seeing during the week for trading perspective, is horrible. The worst we've seen three days in a row since all this started. So it's really disappointing. You know, the gap up on Monday is one thing. The gap up on Wednesday is another thing. It puts the market up, but the action, the, the actual trading action that's pushing the prices higher is non-existent. So just be aware of that NASDAQ side, um, you know, not much different. Again, the gaps and the gaps and the gaps. So um, it is what it is. All right. In terms of economic data coming out for the rest of the week on Thursday, Philly Fed Manufacturing Index and the weekly initial and continuing jobless claims numbers an hour before the bell. Flash services and uh, manufacturing PMI at 945. CB leading index at 10. Existing home sales at 10. Natty gas at 1030. There's a Fed member speaking at 1. And and Fed Chair Powell speaks at 2.30. There is no data on Friday. Um, this is not an options expiration. We had it last Friday. This is not end of the month. That's next Friday. We do, however, have the Memorial Day weekend coming up. So Friday is going to be a bust. Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday have already been pretty slow. So let's hope for some action on Thursday because that's pretty annoying to only get one day of the week. Uh, and then Friday is just going to be a bust because everybody's going to go out for Memorial Day weekend unless there's some kind of major news. Charts, as usual, brought to you by eSignal. If you've not yet taken a trial of our services, feel free to do so. We will help you out for a couple of weeks. Have a great trading Thursday and Friday and a happy and hopefully safe Memorial Day weekend from TradeSite.